you like me to make the first introduction? No, no. no. Okay. Um, this is my home. I'm obliged to start to welcome everyone into my house. Um, colleagues, good morning. Uh, for me, it's a great pleasure that we are meeting today, uh, be it online, uh, to start talking about data issues. Um, you know, we are partnering with the metabolism of cities and in getting in change of our Lebo, your connectivity is very bad. My connectivity. Yeah, you're breaking. Is that so? Okay. Yes. Is it better now? Yes, it's better now. It's clear. Okay. I'm sorry for that. So I was saying, um, I'm going to take this liberty to do um, an introduction in high level why we are meeting. Uh, Kim will, will dwell into the details of how this metabolism of cities uh, data portal is working and who is who are the participants, why the interest uh, in um, bringing this as a focus for the city. And with that, I want to introduce myself, but, but for the sake of time, I will actually request colleagues to rather use the, uh, the chat box to put in their details, um, your name, your surname, your organization that you represent. And a cell phone number is always um, very um, handy uh, if you can't get hold of somebody on the, on the email. So I am Lebo Molepe. I'm working under the, the Department Environment and Infrastructure Services. I'm heading a directorate that is responsible for air quality and climate change and energy. Um, we we have had issues with data. We've done uh, emissions inventories um, for both air quality and climate change, and data has always been an issue. And hence, um, we we thought that it makes sense to forge um, you know relations with the met metabolism of cities uh, community. And with that, without waiting wasting too much time, I want to also uh, request. Mosa or Nobandu to to record the session and also to indicate to the participants that by virtue of participating here, we take it that we have your con consent in recording the session um, and that uh, we are going to use some rules of engagement in terms of wanting to engage. You have the option of raising your hand you can put um, your, your ideas on the chat box um, and we are requesting everyone, all the videos to be off. Um, Kim, I see your, yours is on. Um, I think only when you're speaking can you then, um, you know, um, switch on your video, which I haven't done. Um, but basically, if all the videos can be off, all the microphones must be off just so that we have a better, um, you know, transmission of the session. Thank you. I think I want to hand over to Lunel. Lunel, if you can just do a quick overview without going through the entire pre presentation, just a quick overview of the focus on environmental uh, sustainability. Um, and the, the intention of doing this presentation is really for the participants to start and appreciate our data uh, gaps and why we are doing this session because there's so many avenues in the sustainability sector that um, are hinging on data availability and the flow of data generally. Thanks. Over to you, Luna. Good morning, colleagues. Um, yes, as Lebu indicated, my name is Lunel Serobatsi. For those of those that doesn't haven't met me yet, um, we've recently done with support from um, ICLI, the city's first environmental sustainability strategy, and I'll take you through 
um, just what is a, a brief overview as um, Lebu indicated. Le can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, yes. just one second. If you can just put it in a presentation format, Luna. Okay, so yes, this is the first one. The content, yeah, just the purpose. Why did we do that? What is the vision that we want to achieve? Obviously, as um, any strategy comes with challenges, what are the key issues out of those uh, challenges? And then the action plan, which was very important for the Joburg to do. So this was a partnership opportunity with Cities Network and ICLE to do this project with us. Sorry, so why the need? Sorry, sorry for the interjection. The slides are not moving. Oh gosh, sorry, let's see. Can you see the slides like this? Yes. Can you just so, put it on full presentation for it, for me, the full slide? I Yes, I did, so it doesn't move. Oh. So I'll try again. If it doesn't move, then I'll do it in this format, right? Eh? So okay. I'm just trying again quickly. All right. Do you see the slide now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if it doesn't move, let me know, and then I'll exit and just do it in a n normal layout. Apologies for the technology fail. But yes, the need for an environmental strategy is to that, yes, we want to actually institutionalize the sustainability strategy as a primary and also collective responsibility, because this is one of those transversal functions that cut across all mandates of the, of the city. Um, and it, how we take it forward as a, as a city towards sustainable and resilient future. Um, the need for the environmental strategy, I think there was a whole lot of different views in terms of what we mean by environmental strategy across the city, um, inside and also externally. So we wanted to create a common understanding, um, looking at what are the global trends, what is our national and local implications for environmental sustainability strategy. Out of the strategy, there was various environmental sustainability issues that was identified. We made use of the DPSIR methodology to set then a strategic response. What was also important for us was to look at an uh, action plan of how do we achieve this. And I'll get to this because a lot of the, the issues that came out of the action plan is also actually in terms of data requirements that we need. So this is just a high level to say the strategic agenda for the department, where do we take our cue from um, out of the NDP outcomes? There were two that relate to environmental sustainability. I'm um, not moving, Lunel, sorry, again. Okay, so we're gonna do it this, eh? Apologies, colleague. I'll also load it in the chat box so that you can see. Um, so yes, so it also then take cue uh, um, the environmental strategy from the NDP outcomes, the GDS 2040 outcomes, and also mayoral priorities. There are 11 priorities and number nine is one of these mayoral priorities that talks to environmental sustainability. So what are the challenges concerning environmental sustainability? Um, as I indicated, there were um, nine issues that came out of the out of the strategy. It's relating to increase in greenhouse gas emissions, our energy insecurity because of our high reliance on electricity still, limited water supply, mainly because of aging infrastructure, also increase in water demand um, and um, water pollution often resulting as a result from sewer spills. Our poor air quality, because we're still very much depending on private um, vehicles, dependency on fossil fuel and also emissions from industry. Other challenges was the competing demand for land. Um, that yes, there are many um, sort of competing issues for land availability. Loss of ecosystems, goods and services. Um, that then has implications for climate change, habitat loss, etc. An increase of waste generation and disposal. There's a slow uptake of separation of source as uh, intervention. We're also sitting with diminishing landfill space, um, inadequate service delivery, and of course, a growing population. Poor water quality as a result of illegal discharge from industry, lack of services in informal settlements, particularly waste pollution, 
and then also lack of bylaw enforcement that result in this poor water quality. So what do we want to achieve? Um, the purpose is to provide guidance across all the city's operations in terms of how do we become a resilient, livable and sustainable city. The vision that we um, have in the strategy is environmental sustainability and resilient city for, uh, for people of Johannesburg. And the mission is then to secure, promote, enhance and protect natural systems to build a resilient city. Now, the evolution of the strategy didn't just happen um, during last year when we finalized this present um, strategy. But since 2005, there was the first environmental management po policy in the city. Um, this resulted in a, a number of other sector-specific policies that talks to environmental sustainability. For example, catchment management plan. There's a water and conservation demand management strategy in 2010-11. Um, we also now, um, there's an energy plan that was done in 2015. So you can see that there has been a whole range of various environmental sector related plans that has been developed. And this is then a culmination of what we have done then to put together an environmental sustainability strategy. So just to locate the strategy within the bigger, broader plans of the city, we have the GDS, we have the IDP, we have the Spatial Development Framework, but all of that is, um, is sort of um, informed by city sectoral policies, whether it's the ITP, the Transport Plan, or the Economic Growth Strategy. So environmental sustainability strategy city sits here at the lower level. That's then sort of, it should be, actually be um, arrows that goes up and down as we inform then the IDP, the GDS, SD. Um, the SDF and as well the SDBIP of the city. The principles underlining the strategy, um, obviously the environmental sustainability strategy is a long-term perspective. Um, we're also looking at social well-being and ec economic prosperity. Thresholds that we need to understand what are the thresholds of acceptable change. Um, and as I started off to say that, yeah, sustainability is a very, is uh, it cuts across boundaries, it's transversal in nature, and that there's a collective responsibility with stakeholders, not just within the city, but also with creating partnerships to achieve this environmental sustainability city. As indicated, the methodology that we follow, I think I talk to converted um, colleagues here that understand the DPSIR model, driver pressure, the state, the impact and the response, which yeah, I won't go into all of these details, but yeah, this is just to outline um, one example. Pity that the whole presentation doesn't work, but yeah, to just indicate how the DPSR model works. That was just the... Um, stakeholder engagement. Okay, um, I'm almost done. What I want to do now is to just indicate what are the environmental sustainability issues. And then out of these issues, I sort of highlight what are the data sort of requirements so that we can start measuring um, environmental sustainability. So it's around urbanization that places increased pressure on infrastructure and services in the city. It's around greenhouse gas emissions, which is a major contributor to greenhouse gases. Waste management, because of its significant to pollution, whether it's on land, air, and also the water systems. Open space value, um, because yeah, the value of the natural areas um, not always generate, um, are not always adequately valued, and what the contributions and benefit they can bring. Water quality, it often across the city, the two catchments that we have. Clipper River and the Yixke, it exceeds the legal and the ecological thresholds of these two catchments. Um, water scarcity, the demand is likely to exceed if we're not managing our demand carefully. Biodiversity, the uniqueness of our biodiversity are inadequately protected and managed. Um, and that's also as a result of a lot of land com competition that we have. Um, is also poorly managed. Air quality from resources, both internal and also external from the city's own geographical area. And the last one that we thought was sort of pulling everything to, together is like a, accountability. 
that we both need within the city, uh, city operations and um, that's responsible for service delivery, that we need to understand our responsibility and our role um, in taking care for the environment. So we can't just expect that external um, citizens is actually doing their bit, but it starts with the city itself, with its operations. Then I thought in terms of just sort of, um, we want to start to um, measure this environmental sustainability um, on an annual basis to just pull together um, data to give a sort of a, a trend and a dashboard of how are we doing. Um, on our first issue, which is around urbanization, there we're looking at like what is the number of sustainable development applications that we approve and sustainable development applications is around how did we affect or give effect to our environmental policies. If you saw the earlier slide in terms of all the environmental sector specific policies and plans that we have, we, that is giving guidance then to um, development in the city. Um, so how do we use those policies to then improve on sustainability in the city? Looking then at um, our infrastructure, whether we build um, resilient infrastructure and therefore we will see a decrease in failing infrastructure. The greenhouse gas emissions, this is under refi refinement as we also as the department concluding on the climate action plan. So there will be further data requirements out of uh, that cap um, plan. But what we're essentially looking is um, emission reductions from CO2 and also reduction in climate risk zone. Waste management, we want to continue to divert waste away from landfill. Um, we're st currently sitting with 15% uh, of waste diverted away from landfill in the last financial year. Partnership opportunities that we create around um, enabling recycling in the city and also a number of prosecutions um, because of waste, um, enforcing the waste bylaw. In terms of open space management, this is around um, what are our functional ecological areas that are secured. Um, how, do, how can we then further also create green jobs in the sector? Water quality is aquatic ecosystems that are um, maintained. Also, number of reported spillages that we reduce um, and that reported spillages is often as a result of um, your sewer spillages. Water scarcity, we want to see a reduction in the non-revenue water, um, reduction in rain water input if we want to manage our demand, um, as well as the um, annual re the reduction in consumption water. Then the last four um, is around percent water scarcity, yes, Oh, that, yeah, let's see, yeah, that I've dealt with. The biodiversity, then the two areas is like, what are the percentage of um, biodiversity priority priority areas? Once we've identified that, what are we then protecting out of those bi biodiversity priorities? So those are all data that we require. On air quality management is the number of days that we exceed the PM 2.5 levels in the, city, in the city based on the national guidelines. Um, also, whether our air quality monitoring stations are actually monitoring adequate data um, on an annual basis and that we also issue then and monitor our atmospheric emission license and the conditions attached to that. On the sort of um, general environmental awareness is around uh, interventions that we have with other departments within the city, but also partnerships that we create outside um, the city. Um, similarly to this particular session that we have on now. And then lastly is around the environmental campaigns to see how do we be a change behaviour amongst ourselves in the city. So this is my final slide to just say that environmental sustainability is a multidisciplinary, it's cutting across various functions in the city. We have this action plan where we want to start to collect the data that sort of give an indication um, of a quick dashboard and understand what are the issues. Um, there is a need for the annual monitoring and trend analysis. We'll start to do this trend, annual trend analysis as of January next year. And then also we're using this strategy to inform business plans in the city, not just for EISD as the custodian of the strategy, but also our service delivery entities that they can prioritize and budgeting for this. 
And that's the end of this presentation. As I indicated, there's a lot of other information um, supporting the strategy, which are the additional slides. But this is then the end given I was requested to just do a short overview. But I'll load the full presentation in the chat box. And apologies for the breakdown in technology. Thank you, Lebu. Over to you. Thank you, Lunel. Uh, we are not going to do questions because this uh, presentation was intended just to set the scene uh, around the data requirements, at least from the city side. I'm going to hand over to Kim at this point. Thanks, Lebo, and uh, thanks, Lunel, for such a great um, uh, footing in the context and what City of Johannesburg is doing in terms of environmental sustainability. Um, so I just want to introduce myself quickly. My name is Kamenthri Finley. Um, I am with Metabolism of Cities, and I've been working with the incredible community of Metabolism of Cities for the last couple of months, um, supporting them in this amazing expansion into um, urban metabolism data collection um, that has evolved um, radically in the last couple of months. So um, I just want to uh, introduce this session as a session on um, data in cities. And this is a continuation of a seminar series that was done last year, which focused on um, policy and practice um, in met urban metabolism research um, and is funded by the Urban Studies Foundation. So um, it's really because of them that we are able to have these sessions and um, continue the stream of work. Um, just a quick overview of metabolism of cities. Um, we are a complete nonprofit organization that is focused on um, um, expanding urban metabolism research and make creating more awareness and education tools to understand urban metabolism as a research field and as a practical um, practical field of application for policymakers and researchers. So let me just unpack what urban metabolism is. Urban metabolism is basically the, all of the processes and resources that go into a city, what happens in the city with those resources, and what happens um, when those resources move out of, this, out of the city. So that can be all-encompassing um, water, energy, food, agriculture, um, up to what you buy at your shop, where the packaging goes, where your wastewater goes, um, how much is produced within the city, how much is produced externally and brought in, um, how much waste is exported, um, how much um, emissions are created from those. So it's really as if you were looking at the city like a cell and all of the processes that happen within that boundary um, and all of the things that get imported and exported out of that cell, which is the city. Um, so today we are continuing this process of, of linking urban metabolism research with policymakers such as yourselves, um, and we also have some great researchers in the room, um, and also the people that have been collecting data for the last couple of months. So um, I'm just going to take a step back and talk about metabolism of cities in terms of what uh, resources have been produced under this organization. So we are a completely contributor, volunteer-led organization. So we rely on incredibly smart and passionate people to create resources that help to, um, help to achieve our goals, which is creating awareness, creating learning activities um, and resources and putting those, those learnings into practice. So for the last three months, we've been um, revamping an online platform that does um, that collects all the data that you would need to do a material flow analysis um, and analyze the urban metabolism of the city. Um, and this has come about after years of research and years of refining um, what exactly is needed, what the um, requirements of each of those data sets are, um, and how this is um, how this is further refined and analyzed and being made available to um, to people. So one key thing about metabolism of cities is that we are very passionate about open access and open source, which means that everything that is put onto our platform is freely available and is open to collaboration. So the source code code is all available and you can um, contribute to that. 
Um, and a little bit later on, we'll go through the actual platform. Um, so joining us today is Boipelo Madoncela, who, is, uh, who has been a dedicated data harvester for the last two months for the city of Johannesburg. Um, now, a data harvester is basically somebody that goes and finds this long list of information and long list of data that's required to make this kind of analysis. Um, so, Boipelo, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so she's going to share her, um, her, her experiences from collecting data and what is publicly available. Um, and this might shine some light on data availability and how important that is in the public realm. Um, we also have Graham Gotts joining us, who is the Director of Research at the GTRO. Um, he, as a key researcher in um, this field and in uh, Johannesburg, it's really great to have you, Graham. So thank you for joining us. Um, and he will also be giving us some of his background in terms of um, his experiences getting data to do this kind of research um, and how, how he's gone about that over the last couple of years. Um, and then from COJ size, we have Musa Makhlaji, um, who I met a year ago, almost to the day, um, doing some work for vehicle emissions and trying to find that information um, within the city um, and trying to find data. And he is also going to um, speak from environmental department side. And of course, Lebo, um, uh, who's already introduced himself, and I think you all know, um, will also be joining us in this this discussion. So what's going to happen is that we are going to start, a, we're going to have a discussion about data availability for the next 20 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up to questions um, from the audience. And um, it's also would be great if you have any questions during that you'd like to ask any one of the panelists or um, to just put that in the chat or, um, and then at the end, we'll do a raise your hand and we can go through those questions. All right. So I don't know if my speakers want to just um, uh, show their faces. That would be really nice. Um, I don't know if that will cause any bandwidth problems. Um, but I just wanted to start, actually, with um, – hi, Graham. Nice to see you. <laughs> hi, Musa. Um, so I actually just wanted to start with um, Boipelo and ask you, you know, there, there's something really special about going through a long list of data data requirements for a specific city. Um, how did you find the whole experience in terms of finding data about Johannesburg? Because Johannesburg is the biggest city in South Africa, and it is also a municipality that's nested within other very busy municipalities. How did you find that whole experience? Good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I just want to say I can't show my face because <laughs> uh, my camera is is messed up. So um, you'll see my face, but you'll see a million different colors. So I'd rather not. And um, yeah, so I've been working with Metabolism of Cities for the past two months, as Ken said, collecting data for the city of Johannesburg. And um, yeah, just um, to speak a little bit about my experience. So of course, you know, it's interesting um, trying to find data for a city like Johannesburg. And um, I mean, it's interesting in the sense that, you know, you also have to be very careful because if you just search Johannesburg, then you might just get data on, on the CBD. But um, and also just remembering that we're looking at the city of Johannesburg as, as a whole, which is actually a, a metropolitan municipality. And um, going into it, I thought, ah, oh, this should be this should be fine, you know, because obviously um, Johannesburg is is a metro, and um, you know, I I thought there should be a lot of data, you know, available, but um, that wasn't the case. In most cases, I definitely struggled to find to find data, and in cases where I did find data or in cases where, you know, I found links to data, you know, sometimes um, the links are broken, and you can't actually, you know, find the data that you're looking for, or otherwise a lot of, you know, data is either, um, what's what's this called? It's not, it's not recent, it's not, it's a bit old. Um, so I was always faced with 
you know, like the question of, okay, do I, do I keep this? Do I upload it because it's old data? Or do I try to find something more, more recent? And even in trying to find something more recent, um, you know, sometimes it's a bit difficult. So then I'd always just go with whatever I found, um, even though it, it was old. And also just, you know, make a note of the fact that this is all I found. And despite it not being being recent, and yeah, I think I think for me, what I really struggled with is um, it almost felt like the data was was all over the place. I I think when you're looking for data, of course, when you start, um, you look everywhere, but then you know eventually you start picking up patterns of where a lot of the data for the city could be housed um, potentially. But um, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't pick up on, on, on those patterns at all. And I think what, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, okay that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fantastic overview. And you know, I'm just thinking about um, what Linnell said um, and all of those different, those different components in that plan in terms of, you know, ensuring sustainability and how important data and tracking that tracking those um, those markers is so important so like urbanization and greenhouse gases are like some some huge ones that can be very very easily quantified with data um, but the accessibility of that data is quite difficult so I don't know Graham have you ever had any um, any issues with um, data accessibility and like the the quality of data and the reliability of that, um, especially when it comes to things like waste and water and things like that. You are on mute. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I think we can. Uh, pretty much confirm everything that Board Pelo has said. Um, just to say that Tiro's uh, uh, work on sustainability issues started pretty much uh, with the inauguration of, uh, of the G0, which was sort of late 2008, beginning of 2009. And we've gone through various processes over the last 10, 11 years of trying to um, give some perspectives on on sustainability issues, of course, not simply with regard to the city of Joburg, um, but across all the cities in the Gauteng city region. Um, and and my, 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 my observations refer not to COJ, but also what's happening in some of the minor. Um, and and we've, we've tried for various purposes to collect data. Um, we did a big metabolic flows analysis um, uh, uh, data collection exercise in 2013. Um, starting in around 2013, we, we uh, inaugurated a long running project on green infrastructure and we tried to collect data on things like wetlands, on, um, on number of trees and so on um, across the city region as part of that. Um, we've we, we've done a couple of uh, of different um, state of the Gauteng city region report style things where we've had chapters on um, the environment, and then also colleagues who are with us today from the GCRO, um, uh, Gillian and Christina, um, have worked in a number of different ways, either with the city or with the provincial government on things like environmental management frameworks and so on and so forth. And in every one of those processes, we've, we've really struggled with data. Um, so a, a couple of observations, if I, if I can, based on, on those experiences. Um, it's very clear to us that data collection tends to be episodic. So in other words, what basically happens is that um, you know, uh, the, the, the city or the province at some point or another says we have to have an, a new environmental management framework. They hand the job over to environmental consultants. Typically, there's some kind of um, steering committee or something like that. And then the en environmental management consultants um, or planning consultants then start to do data collection. Um, and they start scrounging the way in the, uh, in the same way as Boipelo has for any data that they can find in the public domain. 
Um, and there just isn't the data available except what you would find publicly on the web in the form of reports that the boy Pelo has, has come across. So, so everyone refers back, for example, to the 2009 greenhouse uh, gas emissions report, which of course then references earlier data collection processes. And there's no systematic process anywhere of collecting that information that we know of anyway. Um, you know, so data collection tends to be very episodic. Um, the, the other thing that we've discovered is that even where data collection is more systematic, um, when you look at the data, it leaves um, as many questions as it answers. And I'm going to share with you um, a, 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 a site, uh, the Gauteng Waste Information System, where by law, each of the municipalities must report monthly into um, this waste information system. Um, and when you look closely at the data, it just doesn't make sense. I was telling colleagues the other day that it's a while since I looked at this data set. Um, but way back when we first collected, looked at this data back in 2012, 2013, um, it was so striking how the city of Johannesburg, which is the largest city by population and economy, um, has uh, apparently, according to the system, less general waste production than something like the city of Chwane or Ikuruleni. Um, and that just doesn't seem to stack up somehow. So the data seems to, to, to beg questions about what sits behind. How is the, you know, the, 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 the administrative systems that generate the data actually configured, possibly differently in different cities, which makes the data uncomparable. Um, and so, I, of course, I could just go on and on and on, Kim, but I'll, I'll stop there and just say, you know, with those kind of observations, as well as, you know, um, uh, emphasis on the point that, uh, on the point that uh, Bopelo was making that um, data is extremely fragmented. It's held in many different, often hidden from view. Um, there's some official somewhere who, you know, as this stuff, but, you know, this stuff never really gets out into the public domain in any systematic way. Um, and so it's virtually unknown. Um, you know, that, 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 that's routine across the cities. Um, and, and yeah, I'm gonna, I'll stop there, but uh, we, can, we can pick up on those threads as we go. I'm going to share this, uh, um, this uh, site now. Thanks, Graham. So, so yeah, I think, I think what you're saying is also um, bringing up this question of, you know, where is that data hidden um, from the general public? And if, it's, if it is hidden, who has access to that? And you know, how how can the city make that data more accessible? Um, and I'm just going to ask Level or Musa, you know, are there any programs that the COJ is, is currently running or is there anything that the city is doing at the moment to make data more accessible? Um, and are you, are you struggling internally as well to find data and that reliability of data? Um, and I'm also thinking back to what Linnell said in her presentation about accountability. <laughs> Um, and how accountability was just kind of thrown in there, but how data can be a huge part of accountability and proving all of these strategies and actions. So um, what, what is the city doing from a data, data perspective, data accessibility perspective, I should say? Thank you, Kim. Um, thank you for the question, but I think uh, I will not uh, respond directly uh, to the question that you have raised, but rather provide our experience uh, when it comes to data availability for some of the projects that we are currently busy with. I think we, and, and, and I would like to echo what the previous speakers have actually uh, raised. There's, there's a challenge with, with data availability. I mean, as a city, we are on the one side, a data generator, but then on the other side, we are the consumer of data. Now, for us to develop some of the strategies that we are working on, you find that we work with a lot of models which needs data as an input for us to work out different scenarios for planning purposes and all those. And we find that uh, it's either you will have an advantage when it comes to data that you have control over. That would be readily available for you. But the moment you want to uh, drill deep in terms of 
uh, getting specifics, especially uh, for model inputs and all that, there's huge limitation in terms of uh, that data availability. A uh, case in point, uh, maybe as an example, I would use the challenges that we've had with uh, developing our vehicle emission control strategy. I mean, one would have assumed that uh, traffic data and uh, data as it relates to the registry of vehicles in a city like Johannesburg, that should be data that is readily available. It was a huge challenge, a mammoth task in terms of just locating who is the responsible authority that is sitting with that data. You, you get referred from one agency to another and by the time you get that data, it's in a particular format. Uh, it's uh, it's not uh, user friendly because some of this data is actually dated, or it's, or it's, it's it has been collected some years back. It's not updated, and you you sort of want to work with the most recent data that is available which then on its own presents a, a challenge because whatever you're going to come up with uh, in terms of your your modeling results, it's not uh, current and reflective of, of the, the current situation that we are dealing with. And that leaves then that we end up uh, making a lot of assumptions and uh, it, it then skews the whole uh, picture of what we, we want to work with. I hope uh, surely this is one thing that is uh, cutting across different departments uh, within the city and it, it surely indicates a, a need for us to start working those yes, different departments and different sectors in identifying possibly uh, data streams that are key for planning and start coordinating and ensuring that this data is available, possibly the central point, and it's, 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 it's managed and quality controlled uh, for this purpose. Thank you. Thanks, Musa. Yeah, I think that's, that's completely right. And I, I think there's also a huge opportunity for other sources of data to be integrated. So, um, I mean, from that traffic perspective, uh, there, there's some technologies out there that are being provided by Google and Waze and other other um, platforms that are more like commercial maybe, but that already have this kind of this data that could feed into city data. And maybe the onus is not really on the city to provide that data, but to collate it. Um, and with respect to what Metabolism of Cities has been doing, we've been trying to do that. And so at some level is to collate this um, this publicly available data into one portal for each city that we look at and and have a have a decent overview of all of those different sectors and how they influence each other and how what what gaps are are are, are, are proving are proving difficult to find in terms of um, data availability and reliability um, and in essence, it's it's quite an incredible tool um, that you could use to to improve the sustainability of your city. If you know where the gaps are, I mean, that's just a whole different um, vantage point in terms of where your opportunities lie to develop um, and what what you need to work on. Um, and that being said, I think that maybe there are some things that are done really well by the city of city of Johannesburg or by external um, data providers. And I wonder, Oipala, did you come across anything that was done particularly well um, that was like a really good data source um, for the city of Johannesburg? Was there was there anything that like really resonated with you? Um, there definitely were some some, you know, you come, I came across some reports where I thought, oh, wow, this is really great information. Um, for instance, I can't, I can't remember. So some of them were commissioned by, by the city of Johannesburg, but by, um, you know, external consultants to do these studies. And I remember specifically finding, um, I think it was two documents on, on manu the manufacturing 
industry in in Johannesburg. And I found it so useful because, um, especially for, you know, for the kind of data we were looking for, is, you know, it actually, you know, gave information on all different manufacturers, as well as where they're located within the city of Johannesburg and, you know, what they what they manufacture. And, you know, going through that, I was like, oh, this is so great. But, um, you know, also hoping that, uh, that that kind of data, that kind of thing, you know, could be done maybe not every year, but at least, you know, every three to four years just to keep updating that. So that I found was, was quite quite good. And also um, just I, I mentioned yesterday with, um, with regards to, to, to pick it up reports and obviously um, <laughs> Graham has mentioned that, you know, some of the, the waste data may not be completely reliable. And but but just having having that in, in within the reports, I think it is quite a good thing and a good a good practice um, for pick it up to actually put their waste data in their reports. Um, I guess it's the onus is on them to ensure that that the data is, is reliable. So, yeah, I. And and of course, you know the the IDPs and and that the, that sort of um, reporting, you know, it does have useful data. And also, you know, on the city of Johannesburg's website, those those documents are there, and you know, the yearly documents are are there, and you can see that it's actually updated regularly. So I found that I found that very useful. And the city of Johannesburg's website in general. Um, I find I find it very interesting because even if you just search on Google something about Johannesburg, the city of jo Joburg's website will pop up, and they have these really cool, um, you know, like little blurbs about Joburg, and um, it may not be, you know, like a hardcore data set, but it often led me to 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 knowing what I should look for and where I can I can look for things and find things. So in that regard, I think um, Joburg is definitely, City of Joburg is definitely doing well, yeah. Fantastic. So, um, so I also just want to provide some, some, some context around what Boy Pillow has been doing for the last couple of months. And I want to share with you um, uh, the, well, first, let me share with you the link to it. Um, and then I'm going to share my screen. So this is the Johannesburg City Portal. I'm just going to share this in the chat. Um, oh, goodness. Um, and then I'm going to share my screen. And you can follow on screen. Um, can everyone see? Yeah. OK. So. Um, this is this is our data portal, and this is um, specifically for Johannesburg. And I'll take you back to the data hub, which has all of the cities that we're currently collecting data for. Um, and we have, like I said, this has been a year long, years long journey into refining, you know, what is needed in, to determine urban metabolism for a city. Um, and so there are four different layers here. Uh, context, biophysical, infrastructure, and stocks and flows. And um, this is just the dashboard for um, for City of Johannesburg. And you can go through all of the data sets uh, where Pillar has collected. Um, and each one is properly referenced and um, the copyright is up to date and the links are up to date um, because she's just completed this. Um, but the idea behind this is that because we're a contributor-led open source, um, open access um, community, uh, this will be constantly updated. And the idea is that, you know, we have more than one contributor for each city and people take an interest in this and um, keep adding to, to, the, to the volume of, of work. So um, here are also the publications and reports that she's found and the maps. So um, this might be incredibly interesting for GIS people at COJ, um, all the shape files um, that she's been able to collect around um, infrastructure, around trees, around mining, soil quality, um, and then multimedia that goes with that. So, I mean, these are by uh, media type. 
um, and then we can go into um, one of the layers. So the first layer is lo generally looking at the city boundaries. Um, so you can see the shape files here, the web pages, um, and this is this context layers to do exactly that is to provide context about the city um, and to um, be able to put things in perspective in terms of you know the size of infrastructure and the volume and size of stuff flows. Um, and I mean the the level of detail here um, can can vary. So it can be very broad according to the data that's available um, or can be extremely detailed. And that really depends on um, how good your data harvester is, how, how, how involved the community is in um, collecting their data and also what's available. Um, so just as an aside, next week, we will also be having a session with all of our data harvesters um, and we'll be looking at how data, uh, data collection is varied between Johannesburg, Kigali, uh, Paris, Singapore and Barcelona. So five very different cities. And um, something interesting, just something I always remember is how um, Wapello struggled to find um, information on trees and she eventually did. But in Barcelona, they have uh, GIS coordinates of every single tree in the city. Um, so the, the level of detail can really vary um, across cities, which I think is quite fascinating. So here is also like all of the biophysical traits and things that would feed into your natural infrastructure. Um, your bodies of water, how that changes, um, and uh, climate and, and whatnot. Um, and I also want to add here is that Wepela didn't do this on her own. She did a lot of the work, but she had a lot of guidance from um, one of our founders, Paul Hookman, um, who's created a series of instruction videos for each component of this, of this um, data hub. Um, and it's also turned into an online course that you can take um, that tells you what to look for in terms of um, the data set, in terms of reliability, in terms of um, copyright um, and uh, temporal scope. So like whether it's um, relevant um, within a certain time frame um, and, you know, how to go about getting the correct data here. Um, so that's also freely available um, for use. Um, and I'll just go through layer three as well as land use, agriculture, construction. Um, there's also some mining, a little bit a little below, electricity generation, energy storage. So everything. It is everything, um, which is why this is kind of a really unique resource and a really unique platform um, that it is everything and anyone can contribute. So um, please do take a look, sign up for free. Um, it's just an email address. Uh, you can add notes and questions and comments to any of these um, and start conversations with people who are interested in it um, and add data sets as well. Um, it would be quite, it would be so good to have the constantly updating, um, updating um, resource. So um, this might be of interest to Musa and Lebo as well, the transport stuff, um, in terms of where everything is, um, and this could very well be updated um, from the vehicle vehicle emissions um, project that you have ongoing. Um, yeah, it's really quite comprehensive, and then I'll go through stocks and flows. Um, so a stock is um, a volume of any resource. So um, just like you'd have like fish stock or stock in your retail. Um, you would have the same thing for any of your industries. Um, and a flow would be the movement of that resource from one place to another, um, or how it flows through the city. Um, so you can see here that it's like really comprehensive. It looks at everything, including livestock. Um, funny enough, in Kigali as well, they have, um, they have really good census data of chickens and goats. Um, because people people keep them in their homes, so it was part of the census data. Um, so you could see where all the goats and chickens are within the city, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, it really does go go quite quite into it. And here's some air quality stuff. Um, I know that the air quality um, reporting is quite good in the city of Johannesburg, so it's all here. 
um, and really quite quite interesting. So you can browse this whole library, you can click on each of these, um, and you'll be able to see the full record um, in terms of you know what it's referring to, who authored it. Um, you can download you can download it and um, yeah, and you can add comments as you please. Um, so I'm just going to go show you this, the all of the cities that have currently been done. Um, so we have a large number of um, South American cities um, that have been included in this because we have a huge class of South American students that are currently doing the online course um, in data harvesting. So you can see here the status of, of all of these cities in terms of data collection. Um, and the status doesn't necessarily mean that all the data that exists for this context layer has been collected. It just means that um, a certain number of documents have been fulfilled um, and within those categories. So, I mean, we're only at C now. It's, it's quite extensive. Um, so with that, I want to, I want to just check um, how we're doing for time. We're at an hour now. Um, I'd like to open it up for any questions or comments um, from the audience. And if not, um, I'd like, Lebo, would you mind um, talking to us a little bit about, um, about the Data Champions Forum? Oh, here we go. We have some hands. Uh, Pelo. Oh, was that an old hand? Uh, Monique. I think Boy Pello doesn't realize they're on mute. Oh. No, no, no. I, my, my mute button wasn't working. I kept clicking and mute, but it wasn't working. Um, I just had just have one more comment with, with regards to um, at least one, one data source, I'd say, is there are a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of research coming out of universities about the city of Johannesburg. Um, I, I don't know what what the process is, maybe with the city, but I can give an example. I, I did my research um, on the city of Cape Town, and um, I actually had to register with the city to, you know, they had to give me permission to do my research. And, you know, and a condition of them approving me um, or allowing me to do my research was that I send them my thesis when I'm done. And I think, you know, even considering something like that is a good way to, to collect data because just going through the internet, I, I found a lot of um, academic research on the city of Johannesburg that's, that's quite useful. So I think the city could also look into, into that for, for um, yeah, just beefing up, you know, their, their data. That's, that's all. Thanks, Wolves. Um, Monique. Good morning, everyone, and thank morning. you very much for um, all of the information, um, especially because we at the I'm at the Joburg Smart City, and one of the things that we're pushing on now is you know data governance policies as well as um, trying to get our our data repository together um, so that we kind of have one centralized location um, for data, and then also, of course, just being able to understand the different levels of sensitivity of the data that, that comes up. Um, so I, I would, you know, like this to, to also be a continuum um, of efforts uh, because the, the data that you're collecting, if it's being sourced from universities and um, external um, sources, and it's not very sensitive, and this is probably the things that we can um, utilize for citizens and residents and academics, et cetera, to be able to have access to, um, you know, which is an important layer of, of um, data accessibility um, for anyone who wants to review our city or work in the city or develop a business in the city or um, develop a new idea to improve the city. Um, so I, I was just wondering if there has been discussion with, we're working with the South African Cities Network, 
um, who are helping us to build that. I'm just wondering if there is engagement between your organization and theirs so that, again, we are not creating um, variant data sets. We're really trying to make sure there's one version of the truth. Um, so even if that means data sharing um, and using similar data or analyzing um, similar data, um, I just want to make sure that that, that alignment is there um, and that you know about it for, for us to, to plan uh, adequately. Thank you. Sure. So um, from my personal perspective, I don't think we have a connection with um, the South African Cities Network. I'm not sure. I'm one person in but a larger group of, of people. Um, but it would be very interesting to um, connect with them. And if you if you would connect us, that would be great. Um, I also think that, you know, instead of try instead of duplicating work, I think um, if you wanted to use this research resource or if the um, cities network wanted to use this resource, it is open and freely available. Like I said, you just need to like basically log in with your uh, a, an email address um, and you can use that as freely as you'd like um, and add to it. So it can really become your own platform. Um, and um, that's the idea is that like it's a share economy in terms of data. Um, and it would be, I think the city of Johannesburg is also, the, I think that's also why the interest is here is that, you know, it's a unique resource where everything is collated and organized quite nicely. Um, and if the city also steps in and, and uses this um, as a way to manage their data um, or as a way to just have an overview of what's publicly available, um, it could be incredibly useful going, going forward. Um, so, yeah, it would be great to connect with uh, SACN, is it? Um, and uh, see how we can how we can collaborate and work together. Absolutely. Um, Graham, you wanted to, you have your hand up. Thanks. Um, I, I just have to say that um, I've been having a look at the, uh, really is a fantastic, fantastic resource. Um, uh, you know, GCO sometimes gets confronted with this question, why are you not more of a data warehouse? You know, because if you had uh, all the data that is collected across Gauteng in one place, everyone would be so much the richer. And, and you really do see the value of, of that kind of thing in, in, in what you've produced. I mean, it's particularly compelling because, you, you know, once you begin to see the lists of what's under each of those headings, you then begin to think about all the things that you know about that should also probably be there. And so it's a, it almost starts to auto-generate its own, you know, further contributions. Um, and it would be great to see whether we can, um, you know, through the facilities that are begin to put some of our own data sets uh, that we've collected over the years onto that onto that facility. I just wanted to ask two questions. First, the, the question is, are there any limits in what can be put on there um, that we should be mindful of? Um, uh, you know, for example, it would be fantastic if, you know, where we, we do see points of excellence. I'm thinking here, Dylan, of the, of, of, of the shape files that you've collected around uh, parks, for example. Um, you know, are there any limits to city departments putting the, the stuff that they've collected onto the site? Um, uh, you know, or is it just sort of completely open? Um, and, and secondly, you know, obviously once a data harvester, which is a, <laughs> a warm body in a seat, um, you know, stops performing their role, um, do you have any sense of what is likely to be the continuation of the, uh, of, of, of the process of uploading data? Do you want to hand this over to someone in the city in order to keep it going in some way? Thanks, Kim. Okay, okay cool. Um, very interesting questions. Um, in terms of limits, I don't know if I'm fully technologically qualified to answer, but I will say that um, instead of being a file repository, we're more of a data source repository. So like instead of um, hosting big files, we um, we have the links to those, those files, which can also come at a cost because sometimes links expire. So um, I'm gonna refer that question to the future and come back to you with that um, uh, in terms of you know what's, what's best. I don't know if Carolyn is actually on this call, if she wants to answer the question. Um, or she knows the answer. Um, uh, but in terms of data harvesters, 
So yes, warm bodies and seats is amazing. Um, and it's been really incredible to have um, people dedicated to this in the last few months. Um, but I think, you know, you'd be you'd be very surprised in terms of people volunteering this information and volunteering their time. Um, there are some incredibly passionate and enthusiastic people out there, um, including the people that founded Metabolism of Cities. Um, and it is unreal, their energy um, in, in terms of, you know, being able to contribute to these, these, um, these platforms um, and continuously just working towards more sustainable cities in this way. Um, so I think, you know, uh, yes, it is. It has been great to have a dedicated person, but I do also foresee this taking on its own life in terms of, you know, eventually getting the word out there. We've only really had this platform running for the last couple of months um, and getting people involved, um, getting organizations involved would be really great um, for them to use it because it's a two way system. You give data and then you also you get the this amazing organizational tool um, to to review all this data per, peruse all this data. So, um, I mean, I see it taking a life on its own. It's not necessarily a handover. It's um, open, freely available, and um, it will evolve as, as it goes along. And we've seen that a lot for the South American cities. Um, um, and um, that's just taken a life on its own. It's I mean, 50 different cities have been uploaded um, just from one cohort of, of people. Um, so the enthusiasm is there. Um, and speaking of enthusiasm, one of those amazing people is Carolyn Belstead, uh, who just put up her hand. Carolyn, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for this nice intro. Yeah, so I'm also part of Metabolism Cities, um, working more on the research side and um, uh, building up this platform. And we're currently exploring going to a dashboard design as well, as was mentioned in the chat. But to answer your questions, I'm not too concerned about replacing the warm body in the seats. Um, because uh, even if it's vacant, personally from Metabolism Cities, we're really in, in it for the long run. And um, even if the seat is uh, vacant for half a year or so, um, someone will come and, and pick this up because um, like Kim said, we have so many people interested in, in collaborating and participating, be it from a city's perspective or being for personal research, someone writing their thesis, for example. Um, so uh, I think that's okay. We could certainly discuss um, handing this over to the city. It's also okay if the seat is sh shared amongst many people, um, which is why we're also trying to really make this... Um, uh, accessible and easily understandable where we are in terms of data collection. So which of these layers are actually covered? And to address your second point around um, the data and what the limits are, that's certainly true in terms of, um, like Kim has, has said as well, um, data size. Um, if there's very large data files, um, we'd rather not have them. And the second limitation is uh, copyrighted data just because um, for legal reasons, um, it's very, it's a, it's a tricky territory to get in to actually host copyrighted data on our server. And um, since we want to um, embed the, later on, process the data and, and, and then embed it on the platform in, term, in, in terms of visualizations, we'd much rather prefer that everything is um, open source or we have rights uh, to actually use the data so that visualizations can then also widely be shared without any restrictions or limitations. So I hope this answers your questions a bit. Thanks. Fantastic. So, I mean, I also want to just add to that in terms of, um, in terms of people people having enough passion um, and having enough uh, momentum to be able to do this themselves. So I've also just shared to the chat um, a link to our education portal, and that's where um, a lot of our online courses are. And like I said, um, Paul Hookman, who is one of the founders, he has created an online course um, that guides you through this whole data collection process. Um, and I mean, you can, you can, go to whatever layer you're interested in and learn more about why you choose those specific data sets. Um, and then there's also some resources in terms of um, understanding urban metabolism from a policymaker's policy perspective. 
um, and understanding how that can also help you improve your policies um, and improve the way that um, we go about creating sustainable cities through policy. Um, so I think, you know, take a look at that education portal because there's, I mean, the courses are quite short um, and the videos are quite short um, and they're packed with information and can be really quite can be very interesting, um, even if you're just looking, not in terms of data collection, but in terms of a relevant sector um, to understand, you know, what what kind of, um, what how, how it's relevant in the scheme of things and um, where to look for things. Um, it's, it's really quite interesting. Um, so I want to just do a final check. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? No. Um, I don't know. Lebo, do you want to talk a little bit more about the Data Champions Forum? Or was that Harvey? Sorry, I'm not it sure. Was, it was Mzuki. I would rather he speaks to that. But uh, I think Monique also shared some of the initiatives that the city is exploring. I would I would actually urge Mzuki Serada to speak to um, the issue. Thanks. Sure, are they on the call? No. I was on the call. He's the one that posted the message here that, um, let me see. Um, no, it's about the Smart City Committee. So it's pretty much what Monique was reporting. Okay. Because he said okay. the Smart City Committee within the COO's office is working on a city data governance policy. So I think um, it's actually quite delightful that we have Monique on call because um, we've been talking to he, to them also around how do we streamline data um, requirements and data flows across the city. But because you've given me this opportunity, I think, you know, it's actually awesome that uh, as a community of CODA, we are now exposed to possibility. We need to just probably, um, you know, um, almost consolidate um, our 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 way forward in terms of how are we gonna leverage of an opportunity such as this. Um, yeah. So I I just want to leave it there. Thanks. Yeah, fantastic. So I think you know this platform is quite. It's like I said, it's unique. It's also an interface where you know I think in this field of sustainability. A lot can be lost between people doing the actual research and people creating policies and how that actually plays out in the real world. Um, and really, one of our missions is to make that happen uh, and make that happen in an efficient way and make it um, uh, and, ma and make sure that it's 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 deeply rooted in reliable data. So. Um, a platform like this can be really useful for connecting those people, for connecting researchers, for connecting people that are finding the data and connecting policymakers. Um, and I really think that this tool um, and I mean, the whole organization itself can be uh, kind of a catalyst, a catalyst for, for positive change um, in terms of data management, in terms of accessibility um, and you know, this is a growing trend throughout the world and in these um, very progressive cities is that there are more and more cities that have open data portals. Um, and that could be, that's like all of the data. So how many streetlights there are, you know, and have it all in one central repository. And it's really becoming, um, it's becoming quite an interesting world to live in where there's so much transparency um, and there's so much information available um, for people to, to help co-create solutions and help um, have perspective on the, the, the size of our problems um, and, the, and the, the potential of our solutions. Um, so I really think that there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of potential here and there's a lot of work that's been done already. Um, and it's just about linking everybody together and keeping that relationship going. Um, so with that being said, um, if there aren't any more questions, um, so there's some some steps that you can take to you do. 
Hi, Monique. I've had my Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to jump in. It sounds like you're winding down. <laughs> Sorry to interject. <laughs> but before you give concluding remarks, yes. um, you know, there was a, just a couple of things that was going through my mind. Um, one, what is the marketing plan for this? Like, because I'm, you know, I'm really trying to stay focused on this smart citizen, and as you say, the co-production, the collaboration. The, um, how do we bring ideas and give platforms for young people, most especially, and young innovators um, to know what's there and to participate? So, I think the question is, how do we open this, and how do we market this, and how do we um, get this information out there, and how what is it that people can do in order to connect with this? Like, is there a open meeting that you have to discuss this or the webinars? Um, you know, what is the ongoing plan so that uh, there's an outreach, um, um, uh, outreach activity that is happening alongside of this? And I'm saying this because, you know, again, I, I would like to be able to maybe if you have a, an article that you, that you use in order to uh, let people know, then that's something that then we would want to take and then ask group communications to maybe highlight it as something that Smart City is doing, or we're trying to get a, our, our, um, a Facebook page and a social media page up. This would then be something that we would want to be able to share um, on that page for, for people to, to access. You know, so, so essentially, how do we market this so that people are aware of it? How do I send it through to all the different tech hubs that we are engaging with so that they're aware? Um, that's the one. And then how do we, you know, do something that's more, so when I'm, I'm talking about us creating a data um, repository, you did say that we could always connect to it online. But is there something more proactive that we can be doing? And is there any suggestions from you or the team as to what that might look like other than what I've just expressed? Um, so fantastic point. I think um, I think I was kind of rolling in there anyway um, with what's happening next. So um, this is the first of these city sessions that we've we've had. Um, and uh, I think it's been an incredibly interesting conversation. And we're going to be having um, four more of these um, on other cities. So like I, like I said, Kigali, Paris, Singapore, and Barcelona are the other cities that we've been, um, we've been doing intensive data collection on, um, but also just more in general on like different topics that are arising are over conversations about this. Um, and we are having uh, a session next week, which compares all five cities. So that's Johannesburg, Kigali, Paris, Barcelona, and Singapore. Um, that goes through, you know, the data harvesters and their experience and how things differed. Um, I've been in constant communication with all the data harvesters for the last couple of months, um, and it is fascinating the differences between cities and how cities manage their data. Um, and it's it's going to be a really good session. So that's next week, um, Thursday, um, which I'll also forward the invitation for. Um, but we do also have, in terms of you know ongoing um, ongoing participation and ongoing engagement, we have um, uh, onboarding um, uh, sorry onboarding sessions meetings um, where we we introduce um, the organization and we um, have face to face with new people that join um, as contributors um, for them to learn more about the organization and what they can do and how our um, our work um, work and tasks works. Um, so like I said, we're a, um, we're a volunteer led organization. So that means that every single component of work gets done by a volunteer at some point. So um, we have a system on our main website um, around uh, our community where you can take up work pieces that contributes towards the building of the data hub, we can contribute towards creating education tools. Um, it can contribute to, you know, marketing and writing blog art, blogs. Um, uh, so there are multiple things that are already listed on the website um, in terms of work pieces that people can get involved in. And that's like a very active process. So you go in and you can assign yourself a work piece. Um, and have conversations with people about it, how to do it, there's instructions, 
Um, and there's like a whole point system that works into it. So you can see who's contributed um, the most and badges that you earn. And it's become quite an interactive process. Um, so in terms of, you know, actively participating, there's also that component of it, of metabolism of cities. Um, but what I'm also hearing is like a, a very, very nice call for collaboration, I think. Um, and I think it'd be really great for us to also connect um, outside of this uh, in terms of how we can how we can make um, a partnership potentially work. Um, so I hope that answers all your questions that we should definitely connect outside this call. Um, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Nice to see your face. Um, so I will now wind down um, because we are reaching an hour and a half. I don't know if um, anyone from CRJ would like to make any concluding remarks um, before I before I go to my last last few steps. Thank you, uh, Kim. Uh, it will be a two part session. I want to hand over to Musa, but uh, I'm actually quite. Um, quite happy that Monique has actually taken in interest in this because across the city we do really need an anchor um, from which this kind of initiatives, especially when we're talking about data, can be coordinated, you know, so that uh, it also in informs the policy that she'll be working on as to what kind of data are we going to be sharing what data and form. Are we going to do that? So uh, in terms of the next step, obviously, uh, you've made a commitment to engage with Monique, but I want to also urge Monique that as a COJ community, we need to put our heads together so that we then consolidate on how we are going to take this kind of opportunity forward. I'm, I'm sort of repeating myself, but I think it's at the crux of, of, of this. How this thing came about is through Musa's initiative and the digital that he has experienced in getting air quality related data. And we then realized that it's actually a bigger opportunity than just uh, data on air quality. Um, so we can take it uh, forward that way. It's on, uh, offline with your, yourself and Monique, um, uh, I mean like Kim and Monique, but I think we need a Monique as an anchor. Uh, you know, to consolidate uh, how Dovek is going to take this thing forward. Musa, you can come in. Thanks, Lebo. Uh, you've actually covered me in your in your response. It just shows that I've now worked with you for too long. <laughs> uh, but uh, just one thing that I wanted to also include, I think uh, the point that was mentioned by Monique around South African Cities Network. I think that's another area of collaboration that we might have to uh, consider exploring uh, further. And maybe there could be a need for a bilateral uh, team from your side. And maybe Monique can facilitate that because at least at that level, we know that the Cities Network is working with uh, a number of cities and you might also above this, you might also want to work with those cities and we start seeing the material flows uh, in these different cities for comparison. Thank you. Thanks, Musa. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to um, just make some concluding remarks. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? I think I saw a hand go up and then went down. Yes, I think there was a hand for all on Dela, actually. I'm covered, Musa. Thank you so much. Okay. There's a false hand. All right. So um, I actually just wanted to tie tie everything back to um, Lunel's present presentation in the beginning. You know, I think it's really good to ground what is what the city of Johannesburg is trying to do in terms of environmental policy and in terms of sustain creating a more sustainable city and how you know i i found that every single component of that plan requires some sort of data and requires some sort of transparency in terms of you know how things are changing over time 
Um, and data can be such a crucial part of marking progress, um, of quantifying problems, of quantifying the effect of solutions. Um, and it's it just puts a spotlight on how important data availability is, data accessibility in terms of the public, in terms of um, researchers being able to find what they need, um, and being able to do so timelessly and being able to do so with reliable information. So um, our data hub is just an example of how um, how we're trying to approach this problem and how we're trying to collate everything together and make this a communication platform for people to connect around these data sources um, and to use them in the best way possible. Um, and, you know, this process, this data harvesting process is just one step in a process that, you know, um, refines that data, analyzes it and gives some, some sort of output. Um, whether it be a dashboard or um, a graphic or something like that. So this is the first step in a, in a longer process. Um, and I think that partnerships with cities going forward um, are going to be incredibly interesting um, to get in from this first step. Um, and um, yeah, <laughs> I think it links in very well with the policies. Um, and I hope that you'll find some use from this session. Um, we do have, like I said, some upcoming events. I've shared a link now um, uh, with all the events coming up um, from the Tabulous in the City side. Right now, there's only one There's one upcoming event, um, but there'll be more added. So please do attend uh, the following sessions because I think they'll be just as interesting. Um, and thank you so much for attending and for your participation. Thank you very much. From the city side, well, well, oh, Graham, you wanted to say something? He's on mute. You're on mute. I keep doing that. Sorry. I just wanted to say thanks from G0 for the opportunity to participate in this. It's been really great. Thank you. How did yes. you read my mind? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But I wanted to say yes, um, thank you very much, Kim, for uh, making, bringing the opportunity to us. Um, obviously, as City of Joburg, we are very in interested in this. And there will be, I think, many, many iterations with you until we get an even, you know, like a solid uh, uh, way of meaningfully engaging on this. As you know, the kind of data that we keep, some of it is not, um, supposed to be in the public domain. So we really, really need to thresh out how and what type of data are we going to make available. But the beauty of what I'm seeing also here is that we will, for, for once, be able to see a citywide kind of data, you know, through the system. Because currently what is happening is that all the data is sitting in the different departments, in the little silos, in people's computers, Etc. But if we start to participate in this portal, there is an opportunity for us to mainstream data and actually eke out all those opportunities around the multiple uses of data. Because I might look at my data in a particular way only to find that there's other opportunities for the next person and so on. So, yeah, from our side, um, you know, I want to also thank Nobanto and Tim for setting this as a city learning program, um, we, we will be looking, yeah, we will be relying on you also to give us uh, further access to this way. I do see also links with the MOU that we have with university. Um, we fail or made a point earlier on to say that, you know, ever, ever so often students come to approach the city, they do research in the city, but there isn't necessarily a backflow in terms of that research being also in the position of the city. So uh, we need to be working on all those things. Uh, we might just be saving the, the city a lot of money because my sense is that we get to pay for the same data over and over again because it's not readily available. Yeah, and with that, I want to thank everyone that has participated in the team uh, Lunel is always in a, in a corner in terms of the 
overall coordinator of our sustainability program. And uh, I'm very thankful that she could make herself available to at least frame our perspective around the kind of data that we need from an environmental sustainability point of view. And yeah, thank you very much. Musa, I don't know whether you are talking that side or you wanted to say something like this. You, you are on blue, and I thought that blue means that you are talking on the other side. Okay, I'll talk to, to Musa of, offline. Okay, thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, have a good day. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Lebo. Thank you, Tim. Hope it's not the last time we interact. Uh, looking forward to uh, working with you again. Much appreciated. Have a lovely day. Enjoy US, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Colleagues. Thanks, Lebo. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank so, Lebo, you, so, you'll contact me for us to set up a follow up. Pardon? You'll, follow, you'll contact me to set up the follow-up? Yes, yes, Monique. Okay. Just to right. I think whilst uh, this...